Welcome to my channel, Wake Your Face Beauty. My name is TJ. And before we get into the beauty tutorials and beauty videos, I wanted to share with you all just my teeth journey and transformation because I see so many of you all right here on YouTube with braces and you all look absolutely beautiful. And of course I had braces, but along with that, I also had to have jaw surgery. Yes, that is right. I had both of my jaws, top and bottom, broken and they had to be reset in place. Me personally, I had jaw surgery actually eight years ago. I was a candidate for jaw surgery because my jaws were not properly aligned. I had an overbite on my top jaw and my bottom jaw protruded forward. So it was kind of like this where my bottom jaw was out like this and it needed to be pulled back and my top teeth were up like this and they needed to be broken and brought down like this. So how you see them now is how they are supposed to be versus how they were in the beginning. And I sucked my, I used to suck my fingers and I sucked them for so long. I, well, I didn't get braces until I was a junior in college and it just began to, to weigh on me. My teeth did not touch at all. And the longer I sucked my fingers, the more slimy my mouth was. Because when you suck your fingers, of course, your mouth is open. And I mean, I would wake up in the morning and it would just be so much slime all over my fingers and in my mouth. And I knew I had to do something. The older I got, I knew that I had to break this habit. I chose to have jaw surgery because at the time I was in college and I was a theater major. And when you are a theater major, your speech has to be perfect. You have to be able to project your voice, especially when you audition and you know that you're going to be performing in an auditorium. You have to be able to project your voice. Even though you have a microphone clipped on you, you have to still be able to project your voice. You have to be able to articulate every word, sound, and syllable uh, so that those in the back of the auditorium can hear you clearly. And when I was in college, I would audition for, you know, plays, productions at the school, as well as productions outside of the school. But because of my speech, I was never able to book a show. And I had a couple of my acting teachers. They referred me to the S Clinic. Now, the S Clinic was something that was offered at the college that I attended where I had a speech pathologist. She would work with me one-on-one -on -one, and we would go over sounds, syllables, and words that started or ended in the letter S as well as the letter C. And for the most part, I did as well as I could, but because my bone structure and the structure of my mouth was off, that is what hindered me from being able to speak um, and articulate my words and my sounds clearly. So I spoke with a lisp and in theater that held me back. I also play an instrument. I don't play it as much now as I did in the past, but because my overbite was so bad, I wasn't able to wrap my lips around my teeth and close my mouth comfortably. So that was also another hindrance in the way that I was able to or not able to blow into my flute properly. So everything was off and I knew that I had to have surgery. The braces wasn't enough. I had to also have the surgery to correct the bone structure uh, in my jaws and in my face. Now, the actual surgery itself. So I actually had my braces on three years before I had the surgery. That's just how long it took for my, my teeth had to be in a specific position before I could get the surgery done. And I had the surgery done while the braces were on as well. So I didn't get my braces removed and then have the surgery. No, I had my braces on during the surgery. Initially, I was supposed to stay overnight and go home the next day. But after surgery, my mom came to the hospital and she saw me and she's like, no, she cannot go home. She... I was immobile. I was not moving. I was completely out of it from all the anesthesia. And she said, no, she needs to stay another day. And they agreed. And that extra day, um, you know, was very beneficial for me because I made sure that I was getting up, that I was walking around, that, that I was sitting up, that I was sitting in my chair and not just lying in bed the, the entire day. So that extra day gave me the boost that I needed to get up. And, and I mean, I was completely, 
I was really weak because I was on a liquid diet from having both jaws broken, but I knew I had to get up and move around. Yes, the healing process began after I got home and you all, I was literally on my own. No one told me what to do or what to expect. Uh, I, of course, was on a lot of medications because of the surgery and all of the medications were liquid because I was on a liquid diet and I had to take all of my medications through a syringe. So this is where it gets crazy. One, one of the things that they did tell me was that I would lose the feeling in my bottom lip. And yes, that is completely true. I do not have feeling in my bottom lip whatsoever. When they broke my bottom jaw, they cut my nerve. So that took away the feeling in my bottom lip as well as my chin. So I don't have feeling from here all the way here. There is absolutely no feeling. Um, I only begin to feel down here um, but all of this there's absolutely no feeling i have feeling in my top lip the, the feeling in my top lip actually came back the day after surgery but there is no feeling here in my bottom lip or chin and you know i always have to make sure that i keep a mirror or even just check on my phone because sometimes if i'm out in public and i'm eating sometimes i'll have food just sitting here and i won't know it's there so i have to make sure that i'm checking myself just to make sure that i don't have food just sitting you know on my bottom lip or even on my chin so yeah, you know, when I'm applying, you know, lip liner here, I don't feel any of this uh, or, you know, my lipstick. I don't I don't feel that at all. Now, what they didn't tell me was that I wouldn't be able to open my mouth. I knew that I was having jaw surgery, but I had the new jaw surgery. So they no longer wire your mouth shut, you know, to set your jaws in place. I had the new surgery, which they use titanium screws. So I had no idea that I would not be able to open my mouth to the extent that I was or wasn't able to open it. So after surgery, that was as far as I could open my mouth. And... I wasn't able to brush my teeth. They didn't tell me that because I wasn't able to open my mouth. My orthodontist told me to email her about maybe a couple of weeks after I had the surgery so that she could schedule me for my next uh, tightening. And I didn't text her immediately because, of course, after surgery, I was really swollen and, you know, really, really sore. So I waited about a month after my surgery uh, before I emailed her. And once I did, she, you know, set up my appointment for her to tighten my braces. And when I went in to see her, she said, I can't do anything. You can't open your mouth. And I had to write down uh, a lot of the things to say because I couldn't speak. Um, I couldn't open my mouth, therefore I couldn't talk. And I told her, I said, no one told me, you know, I had this surgery, you all sent me home with no instructions on as to how to begin to heal. So I was just completely lost. And she literally gave me a stack of, popsicle sticks and she said you know what this is what I want you to do she said I want you to take these and stack them in your mouth and she said just each day I want you to add one and add one and add one and add one until you are able to open your mouth all the way and she said you know what while you're watching tv watch whatever tv show you're watching and she said when it goes to commercial put these in and leave these in for the duration of the commercial and that you all, that is exactly what I did. So I just, I began to literally stack these just as she told me in my mouth until I was able to get my mouth back open and it was painful right in this area so right in here in the c part um you know i felt that pain but i had to do what i had to do to get my mouth open and before i left her office she said you know if you feel like you can eat a cheeseburger eat a cheeseburger and of course i was nowhere near able to eat a cheeseburger but these popsicle sticks saved my life because they 
uh, literally opened me back up. And to be honest with you all, it literally took probably about a week before my mouth was all the way back open and I was massaging it every day and exercising and making sure I was using these popsicle sticks and leaving my mouth open um, just to widen it and get it as open as as, as after I, I was able to open my mouth comfortably from using the popsicle sticks as, as physical therapy, I started eating solid foods, but they had to be really soft foods. So I was eating mashed potatoes, baked potatoes, and of course, insures for, for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. I couldn't chew anything. So even biting down on a French fry, no, I was too sore. I couldn't I couldn't bite down on that. That was, you know, just a little too painful for me. But mashed potatoes, baked potatoes, anything that was really, really soft was my best friend. I was just so happy that I was able to eat again because I had lost so much weight. I was really little and really weak. And I was also eating freeze pops all the time. Eight years later, here I am. I'm, you know, able to open my mouth to the extent where I can, you know, chew my food. I can brush my teeth, brush my tongue, floss, gargle, all of that. So I am truly, truly grateful for, you know, the journey. So, um, these were a lifesaver for me. And, you know, it just got me on the right track as far as opening my mouth so that I could eat again, so that I could brush my teeth. And, you know, prior to, um, you know, having these, my, my mouth was really uh, slimy from the surgery. I had all this dried up blood and everything in my mouth. And, you know, a couple of days after surgery, I I had a blockage. And I, I emailed my or text my surgeon and told him, like, I can't breathe. Something is some, something is wrong. I, I can't swallow. And he called me into his, his dental office and he suctioned all of the mucus and blood out and it opened me right back up. And I just remember, you know, texting my youth pastor at the time what had happened. And one of the first things she texted me was don't panic. And so I didn't. And so, yeah, I, I, I text my surgeon. And, uh, you know, he went in and, 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 and cleaned everything out and I was good to go. I wasn't in a lot of pain after the surgery, but I was really sore. I was really swollen and I was really sore. So even just the touch and even after surgery, once I was able to start brushing my teeth again, my teeth were very, very sensitive. I mean, just, just to the touch. Even though I was numb, I, w I could still feel the soreness all in my jaws, my face, my cheeks, everywhere. I was completely sore. And if I'm honest with you, the braces were probably more painful than the surgery. I mean, just the, the routine tightenings. I mean, because like I said, I had my braces three years even before I had the surgery and then an additional eight months after the surgery. So, I mean, just constantly going in, you know, for three years, it was, it just began to take a toll on me. But the surgery, I was more sore than uh, I was in pain. So I had a team of medical professionals here in my city at the UIC, which is the University of Chicago, and it is actually a dental school. And let me tell you, they come highly recommended. If you are here in this city, if you are not here in this city, I recommend you come here to the, it is a dental school. So you will have student doctors working on your particular case. And, and for me, of course, I was an orthodontist patient. And so I had a student orthodontist, I had a student dentist, and I had a student surgeon. However, because they are students, they have a team of medical professionals that works behind them. So whatever it is that they are going to do in your mouth, of course, it has to be approved by their professors before um, before they complete anything in your mouth. So you, you won't just have a student just working on you. No, <laughs> you know, you will have uh, them as well as their professionals. So they come highly recommended. They did an amazing job. I will never forget the, the name of the, the student that did my surgery. His name is Grant Stuckey. And I mean, I was just completely uh, amazed at, 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 the, at, at the end result. Now, this is where it gets crazy. Yes, the cost was very expensive and it is not covered under insurance because this is considered cosmetic surgery. And this is where my Lord and Savior worked a miracle for me because I went in for a routine tightening and my orthodontist said, oh, I have some great news for you. And I said, what? And she said, there is a program that is going to pay for your surgery. I said, what? <laughs> and she said, yeah, because this is a dental school, they have a lot of partners. And so the orthodontist clinic is on the first floor 
and all the way in the back of the room on the back wall they have a whole wall full of names and these names are the names of the partners that they have teamed up with and i believe these are the individuals that are responsible for uh covering the cost of my jaw surgery because but the names are listed on the back wall and you know for example the first column will have a list of names of uh partners who donated between five and ten thousand dollars and then the second column will have uh the names of those who donated between ten and twenty thousand dollars and and the third column has the names of those who donated between twenty to forty thousand dollars so they have a partners who you know donate an extensive amount of money probably a year before i had the jaw surgery i went in for the consultation for the jaw surgery and my sister accompanied me and we met with the surgeon and he said you know what we are going to have to do your surgery in the hospital because you have to have both jaws broken normally if you only have to have one jaw broken they can do your surgery in a clinic but of course i had to have my surgery done in the hospital and i just remember asking him okay well how much is it going to cost and he said it's going to be roughly about ten thousand dollars and my sister and i just looked at each other and we just gasped um and all the way home we were just saying like ten thousand dollars $10,000, $10,000. Where are we going to get $10,000 from? We don't have $10, let alone $10,000. And I remember talking to my youth pastor and sharing with her at the time. And she was like, girl, you better start selling some chicken dinners around here. And we just kind of laughed it off. But all the way home, my sister and I were just like $10,000, $10,000. $10,000. And when I was home recuperating about a year later from the surgery, they sent the hospital bill to my house and I opened that hospital bill up and you all, it was $37,000 and my balance was zero. Woo! Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Nobody gets the glory in that but him and my family and I were like, wait a minute, how did they go from $10,000 to $37,000? And, you know, it's probably because I did stay in the hospital an additional day and, you know, they ran tests, you know, they wanted to make sure I didn't have any infections, you know, orally inside of my mouth. And I mean, we, we were completely taken aback. And so, I mean, I am truly, truly grateful for, you know, not having to come out of pocket for any of that. And I know that that was nobody but God's hand working a miracle for me. <laughs> and I am truly, truly grateful for the partners because without them, honey, I don't know what would have happened. So it, it took probably, honestly, maybe a full year for all of the swelling to go down in my face. And I just remember the day that I got my braces removed, it was literally the, the happiest day of my life. I had my braces on an additional eight months after the surgery because they still needed to move in place a little bit. And I, the, the day that I went in, and, and I, I knew this particular day I was getting them off. We, we had scheduled like, okay, your, your next visit is gonna be your last one. And uh, I still had the ridges on the bottom of my teeth. And I remember my orthodontist, she drilled you know, the bottom of my teeth straight. And that that's not even something that she was supposed to do. So, you know, it's just those extra little touches that, that just mean the world. You know, when people go out of their way to do just those little subtle things for you that they don't have to do. And and so here I am eight years later, of course, the swelling has gone completely down. I am doing well. I am 110 percent satisfied with the results and e even with my bottom lip and chin still being numb i don't care i am completely satisfied and happy i do have one mishap but it's completely my fault i have this space here because i was being so greedy and eating an apple of course when i'm eating an apple i already have to cut it up but i was eating an affy tapple and once I got to the end, once I had eaten all of the portion that I had cut up, I picked up the stick and just started eating the rest of it. And I mean, psh, I mean, it just caused this shift that you see right here. So I'm completely mad at myself for that. Even though I'm no longer in theater um, and I don't play my instrument as, as much as I used to, I'm still truly, truly grateful for uh, just the transformation because it has definitely put, you know, a smile on my face that, you know, no one <laughs> can erase. So 
yeah thank you all so much for tuning in to this video if you or someone you know is having jaw surgery or has had jaw surgery you have any questions please feel free to drop them down below so i will be happy to answer them for you that was one of the things that i kind of wish i had i didn't have anyone that you know i knew that was going through this process as well you know i didn't have anyone to talk to to ask them like hey how are you healing how are you coming along where are you in your journey um, but it's not a surgery that, you know, you need need to be fearful of. It's a very, very common surgery. And I guarantee you, if you are placed in the right hands, you are going to be 110% satisfied with the results. So yeah, thank you all so much for tuning into this video. I am looking forward to seeing you all in the next one. Bye guys.